Guys Encore. Ah, uh, cool. The stories behind the songs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's iHeartRadio's Miles Galloway. Oh, yes, back like I never left. And here on Encore, we've often looked back at songs that really strapped the rocket to an artist into the mainstream after years of toiling as underground hype. Or we've shared stories of sudden inspiration and last chance risk taking from artists that fans knew as one thing and transformed them into superstars. This week's episode is not such an episode because this week it's Britney, bitch. So with that being said, with a taste of your lips, I'm on a ride. I'm Miles Galloway, and this is the story of Britney Spears' Toxic. By early 2004, Britney Spears had firmly established herself at the pinnacle of pop music. Britney had already claimed the title of being the best-selling teenage artist of all time, thanks to the successes of her albums Baby One More Time and Oops, I Did It Again. And she'd just become the youngest artist to be included into the Hollywood Walk of Fame, age 21. Britney had also already gone a whopping 26 times platinum for her first three mega hit records released in 99, 2000 and 2001. And she would quickly add another 2 million records to that tally for her 2003 effort in the zone. Essentially, as soon as it was released, Britney, of course, remained humble through it all, telling much as Nam Kiwanuka at the time. Because you're barely like in your 20s and you've done all these things and you've broken all these records and you that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's very nice and that's flattering that people say that. Does it yeah. make you, why don't you like, like, I, I would be like, because, yeah, I'm an because, icon. Because mm-hmm. when you think of icon, you think it's like, oh, she's so formal. And yeah, <laughs> you know, she's got to be like this now. Or like, you know, and it's just, I don't know, it's very flattering and I'm, I, I love what I do, you mm-hmm. know, and I think that's what it boils down to. That's why I've done so much because I genuinely, that's what drives me mm-hmm. to, you know, wake up every morning is because I genuinely, I love singing and dancing and doing that. So, um, I'm just trying not to think about it. Ugh. So, really? Yeah. Me you're very humble. More like it. Now, it's, you're on the eve of uh, the release of your fourth album, mm-hmm. and a lot of expectations, mm-hmm. um, not just from other people. What do you expect for yourself? What expectations do you have for yourself? Honestly, I'm at the point where I'm not, I don't really think it's about like selling 50 million records or da 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 da. You know what I mean? Like, I think I've, I've kind of like gone that route of selling a bunch of records and stuff. And it's, it's really just about the enjoyment of what I do and just, you know, um, pushing myself and challenging myself each time and getting more, um, you know, creative, like with videos and exploring new ideas. And like I said, challenging myself, it's not about, let me see how many records I can sell. You know, I'm just really enjoying what I do right now. And, you know, hopefully that will, Speak for itself and people like it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Released only a number of weeks after Madonna, Britney and fellow pop diva Christina Aguilera shocked the world by sharing a cringy yet captivating kiss at the 2003 VMAs during a Madonna medley. Mwah. In The Zone's first single, Me Against the Music featuring Madonna, represented the official torch passing from Madonna to Spears. Speaking of the kiss at the time, Britney was pretty progressive about it, claiming that it wasn't done for whatever shock value the public had prescribed on it, and that it was just another example of two girls kissing in America. She told much. Um, actually, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. Like, we didn't, you know, how many people have you seen in America that have kissed another girl? And then that was really one of the portion. And the rate- it was cool, though. It was a cool. I've never kissed a girl before, so. And the rate of the, all the kisses, kisses that you've ever had? What did it uh, rate? What did it rate? It was so fast. I don't even remember. (laughs) It was really... uh, Watching back, though, I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, oh, we look kind of hot. (laughs) We look kind of cool. But no, I didn't really, um, you know, at the moment I wasn't like turned on or anything. Compared to her previous successes and considering both Britney and Madonna were so deeply in the public consciousness thanks to that VMA's makeout, Me Against the Music was actually a modest hit for the two artists. The debut single from In the Zone peaked at a very un Britney like number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the US, although it did make it to number two in the UK and here in Canada. Something I like to call the Miles Galloway effect, for no good reason whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, the song was still pretty good. And funnily enough, critics mostly only panned the legendary Madonna's involvement in Me Against the Musics with Nick Southall of Stylus Magazine cruelly stating, quote, Madonna bleeds another period of forced longevity into her career, like a corpse leaking plasma backwards, but can't make it a bad tune. 
Yeah, IGN called the track, quote, ultimately forgettable other than its the music counterpart Fallout to and from the duo's lip lock publicity stunt on the MTV VMAs. Whatever side of the fence you found yourself on with me against the music, it wouldn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, because like the album title implied, Britney Spears was in the zone. And as 2003 turned 2004, we were all about to go on a ride. It's wild to think that in a different world, Toxic would have not been a Britney Spears song at all. English songwriter Kathy Dennis had originally penned the bones of the song with Janet Jackson in mind, but had also offered it to Kylie Minogue. But, um... Dennis and Minogue had previously had success together with Kylie's disco banger Can't Get You Out of My Head in 2001, so you would think it was a sure thing she'd pick up Toxic too. But Minogue eventually passed on the song, and Dennis and her co-writers Henrik Jombank, Christian Carlson, and Pontus Winberg continued to shop it around. Strangely, Carlson and Wimberg, known as Bloodshy and Avant at the time, were quoted as saying that they weren't really planning on crafting a pop hit, and that they were simply experimenting with different sounds in the studio, with Carlson saying, We certainly didn't have Britney in mind. It wasn't like her stuff at all. But now, that's Britney's sound. Minogue would later tell The Sun, I knew that Britney was keen on it. I wasn't angry when it worked for Britney. It's like the fish that got away. You just have to accept it. And keen on it, she definitely was. Britney told Music Plus in 2003, before anyone in the public had heard it, that Toxic was one of her favorites on In The Zone. But um, that and uh, I like Toxic for some reason. Toxic, yeah. Actually, I didn't write that song, but um, Bloodshot wrote that and Kathy yeah. Dennis. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they're so good and they're so musically like brilliant. Kathy Dennis and the Swedish Three were not the only composers on Toxic, though. And I'm not alluding to Britney herself. This was one of the few songs on In The Zone that she actually didn't have a co-writing credit on. A huge amount of credit for Toxic Sound has to go to a composer duo not well known in the Western world, but hugely influential musicians in their own right. Laxmikan Shantaram Kadalkar and Piralal Ramprasad Sharma were an Indian composer duo that worked on scores with the who's who of Hindi films from the 1960s through to Kadalkar's death in 1998. Their song Terry Mary Beach, Maine from a 1981 Hindi romantic tragedy film was sampled, mashed up and re-recorded in bits and pieces for Toxic, giving the song its unique Bollywood vibe. The producers really do a number on it, so if you're rushing to YouTube right now to hear the comparison, it will take a very keen ear to hear the sampling. But it very much is there. Maybe I'll put the link in the show notes for you to save you some time. You're welcome. The searing violin samples mixed with the James Bondian guitar riffs is really unlike anything Britney had released before, and it makes the song both futuristic and timeless all at once. In the best possible way, the song is kind of disorienting and haunting. Britney's echoing falsetto in the bridge mixes with the song's poisonous lyrics perfectly, and the samples stopping and starting so urgently brings a sort of euphoric relief when the classic chorus finally hits. It's not a bold statement to say that Britney Spears herself has been a major influence on pop music. That's pretty obvious. But Toxic is heavily credited by many critics and fans alike as ushering a new electro-pop influence sound into the mainstream that is still present in music literally 20 years later. Look at artists like Tate McRae, Dua Lipa, Charlie XEX among its likely disciples. Simply put, the song is intoxicating. No matter who you are or what you're into musically, you can't help but admit, Toxic is a hit. If by some slim chance you weren't addicted to Toxic by simply hearing it, the music video would prove to give you your fix. The iconic music video directed by Joseph Kahn starts with sultry flight attendant Britney delivering drinks to stuffy high rollers in first class of an airplane. She chases a mild-mannered and schlubby man into the plane's toilet and begins to join the Mile High Club with him before, shock, surprise, she rips off his face and he's an undercover male model super spy in disguise. Didn't see that one coming. Britney steals a high-tech security pass from the sexy man's pocket during their hookup sesh and jumps onto the back of popular male model at the time, Tyson Beckford, who's shirtless and driving a Ducati motorcycle at super high speed. Britney then makes her way to Toxic Industries Laboratory to steal some heavily secured poison. A red-haired Britney does an amazingly choreographed dance scene through the Toxic Lab security lasers, but she trips on one of the lasers, which doesn't seem to matter. Oh, who cares? It was sexy. A raven-haired Britney then turns into an assassin and scales a building using suction climbers to confront a cheating ex-boyfriend. She seduces him, obviously, pours the toxic goo in his mouth, seals it with a kiss 
and jumps out the window to escape, once again returning to a simple life of flight attendants. Joseph Kahn confirmed that year to MTV, by the way. She killed that ex-boyfriend. He's dead. Sorry, buddy. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, hold on. I'm forgetting something. Oh, yes, the diamonds! Within the first 30 seconds of our sexy spy story, the music video for Toxic is intercut with Britney Spears in one of her most iconic looks. Fully naked, if not for strategically placed and stunningly vibrant diamonds. Despite popular belief, and because it's kind of hard to tell, Britney is not wearing a thin or skin-toned body stocking with diamonds strewn on it. She really is just wearing a net of diamonds over her bare skin. And that diamond suit was Britney's idea, with Khan saying, I wasn't sure what I was thinking about when she told me about that scene. Maybe those iconic intros to James Bond movies. But every video needs an iconic image to remember, and that's it. For the nude scenes, the set of the video was cleared to a skeleton staff, leaving only Khan, his cinematographer, and his editor on site to avoid any photo leaks. To this day, the diamonds are quintessential Britney Spears. A woman at the height of her powers, having total freedom over how she wanted to express herself as the world's biggest pop star. The music video reportedly cost $1 million to produce, but I think we'd all agree it was money well spent. Some 11 years later, Joseph Kahn would go on to direct another super spy music video for the biggest pop star on the planet. This time, though, it was the iconic video for Taylor Swift's Bad Blood. Taylor's red hair look in the video is a direct homage to Britney and the toxic video's influence on pop culture. And I mean, with the same director, why wouldn't you? I wonder if it was the same wig. Wouldn't you know it, even years after their breakup, Justin Timberlake inadvertently had an adverse effect on Britney's career. In February 2004, soon after the infamous Nipplegate where Timberlake exposed Janet Jackson's bare breasts during the Super Bowl halftime show, Toxic and five other music videos were shifted to being played only after 10pm on MTV. As to not offend anyone, due to a quote, particular sensitivity in the culture right now. Boo! That was boo, not boob. I mean, seriously, what did Britney do? Seems a little unfair, don't you think? Unbelievably, Toxic won zero major awards for its music video, losing its nominations for Best Female, Dance, Pop, and Video of the Year at the VMAs, losing to the likes of Beyonce, Usher, No Doubt, Outcast in their categories. On Billboard's Hot 100 charts, it peaked at a respectable number nine, which in no way makes it some sort of underground hit, but it does show that in 2004, we just weren't fully ready for it. Of course, like I mentioned, In The Zone sold a near immediate two million copies upon its release, and has recently clocked another million to that tally, with Toxic reaching six times platinum status in the US, and it was number one here in Canada and in the UK after all. Toxic also has the somewhat shocking distinction of being Britney's singular Grammy win, winning the award for Best Dance Recording in 2005. Realistically, though, maybe all of that is a good thing, as Toxic is transcendent of the need of critical or industry accolades. His legacy is one of a song that truly transformed pop music as quickly and precisely as the super spy choreography in the video itself. Rolling Stone's Rob Sheffield put it brilliantly in 2022 when he named Toxic Britney Spears' greatest song of all time, saying, quote, It's the great pop song of this century, the ultimate Britney Spears classic. A taste of poison paradise, Toxic is all that and more. Summing up Britney at her best and brashest, Toxic is a swirl of spaced out glam disco kicks, spy movie strings, surf guitar twang, a beat that should wear a warning. She doesn't just take a sip from the devil's cup. She guzzles that bitch and crushes the cup on her forehead. Slipping under the addictive spell of music itself. The one vice she'll never give up. Whew. Well, the seatbelt signs are off. I'm Miles Galloway, and that was the story of Britney Spears' Toxic on Encore. With new episodes every Thursday. Encore is an iHeartRadio Canada podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Download the iHeartRadio app for more great podcasts just like these.